The weather is certainly starting to look up here in Montana. There are only a few patches of ice on the ground still and they should be gone in a few days. It is somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees today and I was planning on giving the horses baths but the veterinarian I've been waiting to take Skeletor to see had an earlier opening so I need to get the barn ready so I can leave tomorrow. I had a lot of things planned today and now I'm going to have to totally rearrange my schedule. Sometimes when that happens, I need a little bit of time to just reset my brain and prepare for all of the other things that I need to get done. I took a few extra minutes to check on little Gus. He is a very heavy sleeping kind of horse and I think he was just taking a nap in the sun. Huckleberry made sure to get all up in his grill and make sure that he was going to be okay. Stewie got a little bit jealous so he had to come over as well. I can definitely tell that these boys are filled with extra energy. The hot sun is super nice but there's still little bits of cold breezes here and there. While I'm rearranging my day in my head I am going to go out and check on the status of the pasture. I noticed when I was filling up the water tank that there was a very tiny quid in there. A quid is just a tiny ball of hay that usually is not normal. It may have just been a little piece that the horses didn't like and spit out in the water. But if it is something of concern, all these horses are going to get their teeth done in two weeks. This is the only bit of ice left in this front pasture. This is the same spot where there was a little stream a few days ago. It looks like Huckleberry is investigating all of the gopher holes. He usually takes gopher duty very seriously, but I haven't seen him catch one yet this year. While that water tank is filling up, I am going to go over and show you guys what I came up with for Goose and Whiplash's pen. I ended up having the exact amount of panels that I needed to just change over their fence. So instead of the temporary hot wire that they have figured out how to escape through, they now have panels. I need to scrub out and refill this water tank before I go tonight. I am so glad that Huckleberry is not slopping around in the mud anymore. He has been so disgusting the last couple days. The vet that Skeletor is seeing is quite a ways away, so these guys are just going to have to wait on their baths. It looks like Whiplash isn't ready to shed out yet either. Goose has been pouting I since I put up this fence two days ago. He has been having himself a real pity party about it. We are supposed to have another really warm day tomorrow while I'm at the vet with Skeletor and the day after that as well. And hopefully these dry lots will be actually dry by then. It always stinks if you give them a bath and then they go out and roll in the mud right away. This dry lot is still a little bit too wet for me to drag, but so far this year's muddy season has not been very long at all. I was trying to see if I could make out Goose's brand, but it's really hard to see when he has his winter hair. I was trying to give him some scratches, but he was still upset that I have locked him in this horrible pen. He wasn't running away, but he was just slowly meandering away from me as soon as I tried to pet him. Him and Pete have very similar moves. I was really excited to see how many people enjoyed Goose's story. Although his temperament is quite similar to Pete's, he was dropped off at the sale by a much more reputable trainer. He was very healthy and well-fed when he was at the sale. And his main reason for being there was he was just going to take too much time for them to bring along. A few of you asked why that trainer didn't just keep Goose. For a lot of trainers that make their living by training horses, they have a very limited amount of spots in their barn. So if you are keeping a horse like Goose for very long term, then he's basically taking up the spots of other horses that could be getting trained. 
The amount of time it takes to train a horse like Goose doesn't make a lot of financial sense when you think about how many other horses you could be training instead. I made the decision long ago that it's easier for me just to have a real job to pay for the horses instead of have to make decisions like which horses need to get sold if they're not progressing in their training fast enough. And horses like Goose are one of the main reasons that I started to just train my own horses that I buy at sales. I think without the added pressure of having to pay my bills by training horses and satisfy clients, it makes it just a lot more enjoyable for me and I think the horses are better off in the end as well. Huckleberry was just a little ball of energy today. He stole Skeletor's jolly ball and insisted that I play with him. This little grass area in between the two dry lots is a tiny pasture that I use to acclimate the horses to the spring grass. It is so crazy that three days ago this was covered in snow and now it's nice little baby grasses coming up. Once it's finally spring, it really starts to come on quick here in Montana. I do take a lot of vitamin D in the winter time, but it sure brightens my mood when the actual sun comes out all day. This time of year, Huckleberry and I do a lot of walking around the pasture, just checking on things, seeing how many like, gopher here. holes are popping up, and checking to see if the pasture is dry enough to reseed and harrow. This is pretty much the only spot that's really wet still. And this is a very technical way to test to see if the pasture is ready to be harrowed. Once these old turds are completely thawed out, then you're good to go. It is a huge waste of time if you go to harrow the pasture and all the poop is still rock solid. So it's looking like another day or two and I'll be ready to do some real work out in the horse's summer pasture. The boy's dry lot, which was getting really, really muddy, has dried up super well. I was able to harrow most of it yesterday. This time of year I always like to check on how my manure pile cooked up over the winter as well. The big giant pile in the middle is from last year and the year before. This tiny little pile that looks like straight up dirt. This is what the manure looks like when it's properly composted. Here is some manure from this winter from the horses inside the barn. Pretty soon here I'll be able to get the skid steer in here and mix this all together. I spied a random piece of this electric fence. I do need to secure this dry lot fence so this should work perfectly until I get some wire for it. The horses were pretty sassy this morning when it was cool but now that it's warmed up they're a little bit miserable since it's so hot and they still have their winter hair. I already cleaned the stalls inside today. This morning I did get Skeletor out and do some hand walking and then I trotted him around a tiny little bit just to make sure he was still lame. He has been on stall rest and the vet trip is going to be a six hour trailer ride for him. And it would be just my luck I would get six hours away from home and he'd step off the trailer sound so I wanted to check just to make sure. Unfortunately, he still is very slightly lame. Even though we did x-ray his stifles, I have a feeling that it is probably a tendon or a ligament and not that big chunk of muscle that he has missing. He has had that since I bought him and it hasn't given him any trouble yet, so I think his problem is something new. Frisco Bill is also being a little bit miserable right now. He does have a little bit more sensitive skin than the other horses because he's so old and I think he just gets really itchy in the springtime. I had thought about trying to squeeze in a bath for him today but the water is still freezing cold because the ground underneath is still frozen. I did try to get some of his hair off and it looks like he is just about ready to blow his winter hair coat. I thought he had a lot of mud on his face, but it was a lot more gray hairs that he got over the winter. His actual birthday is in May and he will be turning 29 years old this year. He was a little bit tricky to take care of during the winter time. He does get mash and a blanket because he doesn't get as fluffy as the other horses anymore. 
I'm really hoping that I'll be able to find him a spot on one of the pastures this summer. He is missing a few teeth, so he does require a special mash. I do have his dinner soaking over here. Him and Nigel both get the same thing. They just get really soaked beet pulp pellets and some alfalfa pellets. While that soaks, I have a few chores to do outside. This little shady spot that Skeletor is standing on is still ice. I usually clean these outside pens by hand in the spring, but this year I'm gonna use the skid steer to clean them out. I just have to deal with them being a little bit disgusting for a few more days while it dries up, and then I can get in there and completely strip them, which will be awesome. It looks like I'm gonna be adding fixing this fence to my list. Huckleberry looks like he's really deep in the gopher hunt right now. I haven't seen Tiny all day, so I'm wondering if she's just sleeping off some of the hunting she did this afternoon. I'm sure there's some more stuff to come out of the round pen, but before I got in there, I remembered I had a different water turned on. Stewie is so ridiculous. He is the only horse that I have that sleeps flat out and will move his feet when he's dreaming, like a little puppy or something. It looks like a lot of the snow on the mountains is melting already. Even though it's been so warm, the end of the week we are supposed to have a snowstorm, which is not really uncommon this time of year. I'm hoping the forecast changes a little bit and it turns into rain because that would be the perfect time for me to put the overseeder down. Another nice thing about the spring thaw is I find all kinds of things that I lost over the winter. I did do a ton of cleanup the other day. When we have crazy windstorms, it will blow like the neighbor's garbage over and little pieces of tarps and things. I have to get a few things ready for the trip tomorrow and I totally forgot that I had to clean out the trailer. The last trip I took with it, the poop froze so fast inside I couldn't get it cleaned out, but it is looking good now. I've decided that I'm just going to take Skeletor by himself to the vet and not bring any buddies for him. He has been trailered a lot over the last year. I am not going to worry about him one bit being by himself even though it's quite a long trip. We will be heading out in the afternoon and then we're actually going to stay overnight um, in the city where the vet is and then have his appointment the next day. Since it's such a long ride for him, I didn't think it was fair to make him stand in the trailer for almost 12 hours in one day, especially since he's got some kind of lameness issue going on. I am really glad that the roads are going to be nice, but I don't think that I would really want to drive 12 hours hauling a horse trailer this early in the season either. While I was dumping the manure, I heard Huckleberry get into a little scuffle with something. He came whimpering over here to show me how badly he was hurt and it looks like those little ground squirrels really got a chomp out of him. Gotcha. They are pretty cute little things but they can be very vicious. After I looked at Huckleberry's little bite marks and told him he was okay he was right back at it. He's a little bit tricky to keep track of around the barn this time of year because when I call him he won't listen to me if he's locked into a gopher. He usually just stays incredibly quiet until I come find him. Usually he's just somewhere around the barn so he's not too tricky to find. Usually if I point and get excited like there's a gopher somewhere I can convince Huckleberry to come to me instead. I'm sure he'll figure out my game someday but for now I've got him tricked most of the time. I do need to fill up a bunch of hay bags for the horses while I'm away. Yeah, buddy. But it looks like Huckleberry wants me to throw another one of Skeletor's toys for him. I guess I could use this break to desensitize Scarlet a little bit. She has been getting okay, okay. fresher every single day with this warm weather. I have noticed her galloping around the round pen a little bit, calculating if she maybe could jump over this fence or not. A few people asked me why she's in the round pen and not turned out with the rest of the horses. I honestly don't trust her on a normal fence. She ran through two solid wood fences when I first got her and she did jump out of the green panel several times. 
So it's going to take a lot for me to trust her to be out in the open. I'm hoping that I can ease her into it and use Goose and Whiplash's new setup to train her how to stay in a fence properly. It can be pretty hard for a wild horse like Scarlet to learn that lesson. It is not uncommon for a horse like her to run right into a high tensile fence and that's what I have around all my big pastures. My fence does have some give in it but it can really injure them if they run right into it. So for right now this round pen is the safest place for her to get turned out. She has gotten a lot more brave though. Instead of running away from things that she finds suspicious now, she'll come over and investigate them. She has also grown a ton over winter. I noticed just recently that she's gotten a little butt high again, so she's a little bit uneven right now. It is looking more and more like she's going to finish closer to 16 hands. I might have to change the discipline that I have planned for her. Instead of a little cow pony, she might make a perfect little jumping horse. It looks like Stewie woke up from his nap and he's pestering the other horses. Before I get these guys their dinner, I am going to clean a few loads out of Scarlet's round pen. She was pretty suspicious of my camera set up on the side of the fence. I haven't ever had it in that spot before. And right there you could see that she was calculating whether or not she would give hopping over the fence a try. I have never actually measured this round pen, but it is at least six feet high. So that's pretty high to be casually trying to jump over. Huckleberry also got excited to see what she was doing. So they're investigating each other. I do think once I get going with her training again this year, she is going to move a lot more quickly than she did last year. She is so much more comfortable in her surroundings and her curiosity is really starting to shine through. Her and Huckleberry made sure that I had lots of supervision for cleaning up her pen. Huckleberry was trying to find the best poop to roll in. When I very first got Scarlet, she was really aggressive around Huckleberry, but now she is docile down quite a bit. I think that is something that you have to teach a lot of wild horses and mustangs. Some of them can be a little bit more aggressive around dogs. It looks like those are all the chores that I have to do for today. I do still have to get some hay bags ready and I noticed Tiny has finally risen from her nap. It looks like she has a giant mouse belly today, so she was probably out hunting all morning. Even through my gloves, she feels really warm, so it's like a little sauna underneath the tarps on the top of the hay, and she loves to hang out up there. I got a few comments asking why I don't get another cat to be friends with Tiny. Last winter, we did have a stray cat that came around and lived in the barn until I was able to docile him down enough for me to catch him. I was really hoping that they would get along, but Tiny hated him. She is pretty independent, and she has spent time with my cats that I have at my house. They do get along, so whenever I get my own place, they'll probably all just live together. But for now, this is definitely Tiny's barn. I really don't think she's lonely. She spends a lot of time in the barn watching over the horses that are in there and hanging out with Nigel. She is very busy in the summertime on mouse patrol. So she really doesn't have the time to be training other young cats how to protect the barn. I fed the horses and got all the hay bags I would be needing for my trip together. Everybody is prepped and ready to go. I am really excited to see what this vet says. Hopefully they can figure out what exactly is going on with Skeletor. I would really appreciate it if you guys would put some good vibes out in the universe for him. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.